Good afternoon. Welcome to the forecast discussion for April 14th, 2014. It is incredibly beautiful out there right now. Although we do have increasing clouds, temperatures though are absolutely amazing in the lower to mid 70s throughout the entire Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area. The only exception is Long Island where temperatures are in the mid 60s because of influence from the Atlantic Ocean and of course over southern Connecticut due to the influence from the Long Island Sound. Otherwise, you're basically around 73 to 75 degrees, 70 around Atlantic City with a southerly wind, and winds are anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour ahead of a cold front that is on the way. I would love to tell you that these warm temperatures are going to last all the way through the week, but I can't. But what I can tell you is that we'll be near normal, so it's not like we're going into some sort of deep freeze, it's just that we're not going to be 10 degrees above normal anymore. And I know we all deserve temperatures being above normal considering the winter we had, but it doesn't look like that's going to last for much longer. On the latest surface map, we can pretty much see what's happening here. And this is pretty much my spring pattern that I've been kind of advertising to premium members, where you get a trough over, centered over the Great Lakes and over the uh, Mississippi River Valley, and you get these strong low pressure systems riding up the Mississippi River Valley towards the towards the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River Valley. In between these low pressure systems in the coast, you have a high pressure system off the coast with a nice southerly wind. So we get a day or two of warm conditions and then some chilly conditions relative to what we've been dealing with, especially for tomorrow and Wednesday, as this cold front moves through and a polar air mass invades. The good news is that these cold air masses do not last long. The bad news is that they're a bit of a shock to the system because you go from 75 to 51 in a 48 hour period, which will feel colder than what it actually is. So here we have our cold front and our low pressure system. And as a result, we have a nice strong southerly wind in place. When we take a look at the radar, it's pretty interesting to observe this because on the model guidance, you would think based on the model guidance, you have this large swap of heavy precipitation from the Gulf Coast all the way up into the St. Lawrence River Valley. Well, we do have rainfall from the St. Lawrence River Valley down to the Gulf Coast, but these thunderstorms are robbing a lot of the moisture transport into the Ohio River Valley. So you get periods of light to moderate rain with some bursts of heavier rain, but it's not a complete washout. And I think that's what we're going to be dealing with tomorrow. We're going to see scattered showers, a few heavy downpours, an isolated embedded thunderstorm that could push rainfall amounts over an inch. But I know some of these models are projecting two, three inches of rain uh, from some of these thunderstorms. And as long as this convection here is firing, I think that's going to be limited. It's just going to limit the ability for that moisture to move further north. But the good news and quite frankly we need the rain, is that we should see at least a half an inch of rain out of this event. Now on the latest infrared satellite picture you can see our low pressure system lifting north. Here's our warm front and here is the cold front. You can see all that lifting starting to expand from the Gulf Coast all the way up into the Mississippi River Valley and then into the Ohio River Valley and St. Lawrence River Valley. This low pressure system right here will help to enhance the rainfall as it's lifting north and east. And on the water vapor satellite picture, you can clearly see pretty good fetch of moisture from the Pacific all the way through the Gulf of Mexico and up the East Coast. And you can see that moisture lifting, becoming enhanced, but focused more over the Southeast than over the Mid-Atlantic and St. Lawrence River Valley. Now, to be fair, this isn't the most organized storm. Uh, this portion of the storm is pretty strong, but this portion still has to get its act together. And I think it will over the next 24 hours as it's lifting north and east. But the heaviest, but the best lifting focused over the southeast and then St. Lawrence River Valley. So let's take a look at the latest model guidance using the Penn State EWAL website, using uh, the GFS model guidance for today. Again, for this evening, clouds will increase. We'll have a nice southerly wind in place. We're pretty much at our high temperatures right now. Now, our low temperatures will basically be in the mid to upper 50s, and they won't be moving all that much. And we'll see that by tomorrow morning, those temperatures in the mid 50s. So in the evening, look for temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, falling towards the 50s by midnight. For the most part, showers will hold off until tomorrow morning. You'll see a few scattered showers, but nothing widespread or heavy. 
For tomorrow, we'll see those showers and thunderstorms move through the region. Now look what happens here. That low pressure system that's down towards the Gulf rapidly lifts northeast into the St. Lawrence River Valley, kind of following the parent low here. And notice we have the bulk of our lifting focused more towards the Great Lakes and towards the southeast and not so much towards the Mid-Atlantic. So I think we'll see a split in the convection here. So as a result, you get a heavy precipitation up towards, let's say, Syracuse, another round of heavy precipitation towards the southeast. And we're going to be kind of in the middle here with scattered showers. But again, I, I don't foresee a widespread heavy rainfall event out of this right now. Half an inch to an inch of rain, some localized urban flooding, and a possibility of some of these embedded thunderstorms producing over an inch of rain, but not a widespread event. So that's going to exit the region. Now by Tuesday afternoon, look for temperatures not really moving much. Upper 50s to lower 60s. Basically, we go from 58 to 60 degrees for temperatures from Thursday, from tomorrow morning to tomorrow afternoon. So there's really not much of a temperature uh, range for tomorrow. Then that cold front exits Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. We have clearing skies. Temperatures will plummet because we're going to have clearing skies, winds slacking off to almost calm, and you're going to have a fresh polar air mass or dry air. There's a lot of dry air here by the time we get to Wednesday morning. And so as a result, what you end up with is temperatures falling into the upper 20s to lower 30s for lows on Wednesday morning. And that's going to be a heck of a shock to your system. You're talking about a 20 degree drop from Tuesday morning to Wednesday morning. So it's going to be a bit of a shock on your system. By the afternoon, you have temperatures struggling in the upper 40s to lower 50s, about 10 degrees below normal. So we go 10 degrees above to 10 degrees below, but that will not last long. Now, high pressure will be in control, so dry conditions on Wednesday. High pressure will remain in control through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And with that, we'll have moderating temperatures. So on Thursday, temperatures almost near normal. Lower to mid-30s for lows, mid to upper 50s for highs. On Friday, upper 30s to lower 40s for lows, upper 50s to lower 60s for highs. On Wednesday and Thursday, we have a series of weak disturbances moving through the region. Not a washout for the weekend. Scattered showers here and there, but still not all that bad. Temperatures in the mid-40s for lows. Lower to mid-60s for highs, pretty much near normal for this time of year. And then on Monday, another disturbance will move through with some more scattered showers. Again, not a washout, but a bit of a nuisance here and there. Temperatures in the mid-40s for lows and lower to mid-60s for highs. Well, that is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen Martino. Follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.